4.5 is solving quadratic equations by finding the square root. Okay. So you have the product property that tells me if I have the square root of a times b, I can separate those out if I need to. And I can take the square root of a and then multiply it by the square root of b. The quotient property tells me the same thing. If I have a divided by b under a square root sign, I can separate them out and solve. Okay. So if I have um, something that says the square root of 80, okay, you can do one of two things. I could break it down into numbers that have square roots like, um, oh, I don't know, 16 goes into 80, right? 16 and 5? Yes, 16 and 5. 16 has a perfect square, yes? Or you guys can do the factor tree. Do you remember the factor tree like this? 8 and 10, and 8 is 2 and 4, 10 is 2 and 5, this is 2 and 2. There's a group of 2's, there's a group of 2's. So 2 times 2 is 4, and you get 4 radical 5. Okay? You can break it down either way, whatever you need to do. Or you could have separated it into radical 60 times, radical 16 times radical 5. I could have said radical 16 times radical 5 and gotten the same thing, 4 radical 5. Okay. It's all about knowing your facts and figures. So if I have radical 6 times radical um, 21, okay, do either of those have a square root? A perfect square. Does 6 have a perfect square? No. Does 21 have a perfect square? No. So what I can do is I can reverse this rule and multiply them together, okay? So if I multiply 6 times 21, I get 126, the square root of 126. Does, the square, does uh, 126 have a square root? Well, it's not a perfect square, okay, because you plug that in your calculator. But I do know that 126 is divisible by 9. So, I can say 9 and 14, and 9 is 3 and 3, so I have an answer of 3 radical 14. Let's say you have radical square root of 4 over 81. Okay, so I'm going to separate this out and say the square root of 4 over the square root of 81. Does 4 have a square root? What is it? Does 81 have a square root? What is it? Answer. So will we have to use like a factor tree? Or On that one? No. You're, not, you're, you're saying like the 80. For 80 you can use a factor tree or you can divide it into other radicals. Okay. Whatever, whatever you see. Now let's say you have radical 7 over 16, which means you have radical 7 over radical 16. Does 7 have a square root? No, so I leave it radical 7 up top. Does 16 have a square root? What? 4. Okay, now, if the radical is in the denominator spot, that can't happen, and we're going to talk about what that looks like in a minute, how we solve that. So let's say, like I said, let's say you have a radical in the denominator spot. Um, Wait, wouldn't you just write the inverse of it? Mm, no. So if I have the square root of 5 over 2, okay, we break it down to say the square root of 5 over the square root of 2, correct? Okay. I cannot have square roots in my denominator, just like you can't have negative exponents so you have to flip them, okay? Cannot have square roots. To get rid of a square root, you have to multiply, okay? When it's just a square root, you have to multiply by that square root that's in the bottom. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by radical 2 over radical 2. Here's why. What's radical 5 times radical 2? What's 5 times 2? 10. 10. So I have radical 10. 
What is radical 2 times radical 2? Radical 4. Radical 4. Okay. Now, 10 doesn't have a square root. That's okay. It's up top. Does 4 have a square root? Yes. It is 2. That's how you do something called rationalizing the denominator. Okay. So when there are radicals in the bottom and it's by itself, that's how you do it. Now, if your radical has something else with it, like it's being added or subtracted to something, we have to take a different look at that. So if I have... How is the radical going to be on the top? It can't be on the bottom. It could be on the top all at once. So if I have this, okay, 3 over 7 plus radical 2. Do you see how this radical 2 has a plus sign in between it? Okay. That means that this is like one unit together. Okay. I can't have a radical in the denominator. Now, to get rid of the radical in the denominator here, I multiplied by radical 2 over radical 2. Here, when it is connected with something, you're multiplying by the opposite sign. So 7 minus radical 2 and 7 minus radical 2. And if we put these in parentheses, we're able to distribute or to FOIL. This is how we have to do this. So we're going to take care of the top real quick first. What's 3 times 7? What's 3 times negative radical 2? It's negative. Well, no, it's just negative 3 radical 2. If this is not in a radical, you can't multiply the insides together. You just multiply it to the outside. Wait. Okay, so it's 3, negative 3 radical 2. That's the top of my fraction. Now, we foil this. What's 7 times 7? Okay, now listen. I'm going to show you how to FOIL this all the way out, and then I'm going to explain something that you can cheat on, okay? What's 7 times negative radical 2? 7 times minus radical 2. Yes, minus 7 radical 2. What's radical 2 times 7? 4 times 7. 7 radical 2. 7 radical 2. And what's radical 2 times negative radical 2? Yes, okay. Now look. Do you see how this middle right here, negative radical or negative seven radical two and seven radical two are going to cancel? I don't even have to multiply the middles. I can just say what's seven times seven and what's radical two times negative radical two and be fine. Okay? You can cheat if you want to. Now, from here, I get this: 21 minus 3 radical 2 over 49 minus radical 4. What is radical 4? Two. So I have 21 minus 3 radical 2 over 49 minus 2, which gives me 21 minus 3 radical 2 over 47. Remember, tomorrow we're going to practice the same stuff. Okay, how do I solve this? What do you think my first step is? Subtract 5. Subtract 5, good. Because we want to get the x squared by itself. Subtract 5, and I get 3x squared equals what? What's 41 minus 5? Okay, and then I'm going to take 36, and I'm going to do what with it? Divide by 3, and you get x squared equals 12, right? Yes. Now, how do you get rid of a square? How do you get x by itself? Yes, uh, yes take the square root of it. So then I get x equals plus or minus. Remember, there are always two answers when you take the square root of something. There's a positive answer, and there's a negative answer. Plus or minus radical 12. Now, is this in simplest form? No, why? Because you can factor it. And 4 is? Yes. So you get x equals plus or minus 2 radical 3. Wait, what happens? What about 2 and 6? You can do 2 and 6, but then 6 breaks down into 3 and 2. You have to break it down into the smallest pieces of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's try. 
have money? Yes. What seems bad? Doesn't seem so bad. Doesn't seem so bad? Just the other part. If I did it by two and six, it would go into. uh, So you do it by two and six, Drew. Twelve does two and six, and then six is two and three. You still get the same solution. Two radical three goes away. Why why would you use two different ones from two different numbers? You just, you're not using, they're not from different ones. They're all from the same number, 12. Okay. So let's say you have uh, one fifth parentheses z plus three squared equals seven. Okay. What's my first step? No. No, 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 no. I don't want to FOIL that because I don't need to. That's an extra step. What I want to do is get the squared by itself. We want the squared on one side. So how do I get rid of that one fifth? Put a square root somewhere. Don't subtract. No, don't subtract. Not divide. If I'm multiplying something by one fifth, I'm actually dividing it by five. five. So what's the opposite of dividing by five? Multiply both sides by five. So I'm going to multiply this side by five and multiply this side by five. So that you get z plus three squared. Now, do you see how the squared is on its own? Now, Drew, what do I do? Now you put the radical sign. Yes, now I take the square root sign. Beautiful. So I get z plus three equals plus or minus radical 35. Um, does 35 break down into anything? It's just 5 and 7, right? So it doesn't break down into anything. So it stays radical 35. Now, how do I solve from here? Plus or minus radical 35. Oh, so I want Z sub- by itself. You subtract 3. So I subtract 3. Good. So you get Z equals negative 3 plus or minus radical 30. Okay, I'm going to try two more problems with you, okay? Two. Okay. Four over eight minus radical three. How do I solve that? Or what do I need to do? I need to rationalize the denominator. How do you do that? How do I get rid of this radical down here? Put the thing over the entire thing. What do you mean you put the thing over the entire thing? I don't remember what it's called. So I've heard you call it both. I've heard you call it two things. Like the radical sign goes over both. The whole thing. Oh, not right now, Drew. No. What? Mm-hmm. How did I get rid? Of seven plus radical two from the bottom. Oh, oh, so you can multiply the top and bottom by the opposite. Eight plus radical oh, three. Yeah. Eight plus radical three. Remember, these are in parentheses, so that you can FOIL or you can distribute. So now I'm distributing. What's four times eight? And what is four times radical three? Good. Now remember, this is where I said we could cheat. What's 8 times 8? And what is negative radical 3 times radical 3? Negative what? No. 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 Radical. Oh, wait, multiplying them. My bad. Yeah. So we had negative 9. Yeah, negative radical 9. Good. So then this transfers to 32 plus 4 radical 3 over 64 minus 3, right? Because the square root of 9 is 3. So 64 minus 3 is 61. So 32 plus 4 radical 3 over 61. And one more and then we're done. How about we try you? Okay. 
3x minus 2 squared equals 40. How do I solve that? What do I start with? Uh, multiply. Uh, multiply. Mm -hmm. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So mm -hmm. it is being multiplied. Negative. So x. Oh, is it the same as multiplying it by 1 third? Yes, it's the same as multiplying oh, by 1 third. Okay. So x squared, x minus 2 squared equals, what's 40 divided by 3? Hmm. It's going to be a fraction or a decimal probably. 13.3. So 13 and a third? Yeah. Take the square root, right? x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 13 and a third. Clearly that doesn't have a perfect square. We'll just leave it. And then we have to add, uh, add 2. Boom. Beautiful. Okay, that is what you're doing on your homework tonight. And tomorrow we will do the same. Tomorrow we will do the same thing.